What makes a great Indiana Jones movie? Disney is hoping your answer to that includes younger Harrison Ford. I've seen things. Things I can't explain. And I've come to believe it's not so much what you believe. Who is this man? He's I'm her godfather. The company looks to have brought out its best work yet to D.H. Ford in the first official trailer for the new Indiana Jones movie. With reviews already praising the trailer for a convincingly young Ford, we're taking a closer look at the tech that is successfully getting Indy to the fountain of youth. Welcome to Technality. De-aging tech may not be new, but it's better than ever. Today we're looking at how Hollywood is using CGI to go back in time and even bring back the dead. Plus, what this could mean for humans in the industry today and in the future. It's not like everyone can age, or not age, like Paul Rudd. So, visual effects artists in Hollywood have been hard at work over the last several decades to keep actors believably young on screen. Back in 2019, a lot of attention was paid to the use of new de-aging technology in Scorsese's Netflix original, The Irishman. We reverse aged you. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> we, uh, How? I mean, that was, yeah. Well, it took, uh, it, it took uh, a lot of work to, to do. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm happy because maybe it'll extend my career another 30 years. <laughs> yeah. But the reviews of the Irishman's de stars were mixed, with most of the negative attention spotting that while De Niro and his castmates looked young, they moved like they were in their 70s. This is a common complaint among de-aging visual effects, the struggle to get natural movement across, well, naturally. But what the Irishman proved was that the potential for visual effects to suspend disbelief in an ever more dramatic way, by keeping one actor playing a character across an entire lifetime. You could even say that Scorsese's use of the tech gave even more credibility to the idea that digitally de-aged stars could be a selling point for a film, rather than just a solution to storytelling problems. This makes Harrison Ford's fresh-faced treatment just the latest example of tech that is only getting better with age. But advancements in visual effects aren't just helping keep actors young. In some cases, they're keeping them alive. Erasing a couple of years or decades off of an actor in their performance is one thing. Creating original performances from actors post-mortem? A whole other challenge. And the challenges aren't just technical. While it's worth noting that stitching together an original performance from past footage, stand-ins, CGI, etc. is no small feat, the real challenge is in whether it should be done at all. Hey, not that you can leave without saying goodbye. Star Wars has had a lot of digital de-aging and post-mortem work in the last several years. One of their most important examples? Princess Leia. Star Wars showcased a serious advancement in the world of de-aging visual effects in 2016 by recreating a young Princess Leia using CGI. In other words, no original footage of Fisher was used. A little short for a stormtrooper. Instead, Princess Leia was a CGI recreation based on an original performance. But after her untimely death in 2016, a different approach was taken to Fisher's role in 2019's Rise of Skywalker. Nothing can prepare you for the end. Rather than use CGI to mimic Fisher's work, Leia was constructed entirely out of unused footage that was shot for The Force Awakens. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Abrams confirmed that they didn't alter her original performances but rather, quote, constructed, lit, and composed the shots around the original pieces that we had, unquote. This method all but guaranteed that Fisher's postmortem performance of Leia in the movie was still technically hers. We have everything we need. This was notably different and less controversial than the approach the franchise took to the digital resurrection of actor Peter Cushing and Star Wars Rogue One. Cushing's character, General Tarkin, hadn't been seen since the original trilogy. Pushing dead over 20 years, the film recreated a CGI likeness of the actor to have him in the film. The whole effort brought into question the ethics of using a person's likeness to craft a new performance that is based on their old performance without their consent. The main difference between using CGI to bring back Tarkin and Leia in this movie? At least Fisher was still alive to consent. So despite being an impressive display of technology, Cushing's return didn't exactly sit well with all fans. The ability to tie in original characters by having them actually appear in new franchise installments gives longtime and new fans an undeniable thrill. 
But if Hollywood is no longer just using de-aging or digital resurrection to solve production problems, but actually drawing viewers into theaters to see familiar faces, what does that mean for the industry as a whole? Some experts are imagining that the new pressure on visual effects to immortalize actors is going to usher in an age where actors may not be needed at all. It may happen sooner than we think. In an interview with CBC in 2019, academic Sarah Bay Cheng anticipated that, quote, fully virtual performances, unquote, would be possible within this lifetime, despite the threat it poses to the work of performers. Here we are, several years later, with CGI juggernauts like Avatar The Way of Water dominating global box offices. Fully virtual performances really doesn't seem like a stretch. If nothing else, it seems like at least digitally retouched or modified performances may be becoming the Hollywood rule instead of the exception. We might have to make a quick stop at the Pentagon, right? In the end, is digital de-aging enough of a reason to go see a movie? That depends. But it definitely doesn't look like it'll hurt Indy's chances at the box office this summer. And hey, at least it's not Shia LaBeouf. <laughs>